So the citrate shuttle takes place in three distinguishable steps. The first one is the joining of oxalyl acetate with acetyl coenzyme A to make our citrate. So here we have our oxalyl acetate as is labeled below, and that is going to join with our acetyl coenzyme A under the influence of citrate synthase exactly the same as happens in the first step of the Krebs cycle, which obviously right now isn't necessary, otherwise we would be making our citrate, isocitrate, so on. When these combine, it's going to make our citrate, which is a relatively large molecule, as you can see here, so I have sped it up. But when making this, you notice that it doesn't have a coenzyme A group, so this must first be removed, as well as having the introduction of two hydrogens and a water being H2O, or just water. Now, if you remember, our mitochondria, which is where this first reaction takes place, has two membranes, the inside being the cristae folded and the outside being the outer membrane. Both are studded with lots of transport proteins. The most important one we're looking at is the citrate transporter protein or citrate shuttle proteins. This is important because we do not have a protein to directly transport acetyl coenzyme A, meaning the citrate we have made can leave through these transporter proteins and enter the cytoplasm, which is where our next step is going to take place. So here's our mitochondria in the background to remind us where we are. Inside the cytoplasm, we will take our citrate and we will put it underneath the influence of citrate lyase. Obviously, we need to re-add our coenzyme A subgroup and remove the H2O that we added before to remake this oxaloacetate and acetyl coenzyme A. We have now put acetyl coenzyme A successfully into the cytoplasm where it can be used in such reactions as fatty acid synthesis, etc, etc.